what's going on? I'm Shane, and I love games. And one game that I love a whole heck of a lot is this bad boy right here. Dark Tower. Look at this box, man. It's huge. We're going to dive into the game itself here in just a moment. But I want to talk a little bit about the importance of this game. Not only to me, but to gaming in itself. So this was actually made by Milton Bradley back in 1981. This thing is as old as I am. And it was made at the height of the original role-playing game Dungeons and & Dragons and board game craze. Um, it's famous for using a very basic computer to track players' movements and inventory, as well as act as enemy troops and the main boss, the tower itself. Uh, for 1981, it's pretty advanced, being able to track where you are, where you're going, and even your own inventory, such as gold, food, troops, etc. You can handle up to four players at once, who aren't really going against each other, but mostly attacking the board itself. The game is also incredibly famous for using Orson Welles in its original commercial to help sell the game. As if he'd ever played something like this, especially in his later years. Last night I journeyed backwards in time to the medieval world of Dark Tower. Uh, finding the game in near complete and working order these days is almost impossible. 80s tech wasn't exactly designed to the last nearly half a century, and it's considered a holy grail amongst game collectors. I was lucky to get mine for Christmas two years ago. Uh, my version has been repaired, refurbished, light bulbs swapped, and the only thing that's really missing are the little clips to keep the quarters of the board together, as well as the little flags. So, very minor things, does not affect gameplay at all. We're going to jump right into this. I think this is very exciting. This game itself is one of the main reasons I wanted to do this channel. I wanted to show people some stuff maybe they've never seen before, maybe they've never heard of, but this game is very important to me. Um, I've always wanted one. I got one a couple years ago. I, I, I barely play it. I, I want to keep it in as pristine condition as I can, as it is. Um, almost as like a historical document, a historical fact about gaming. But uh, without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. This is how you play Dark Tower. The board itself is made up of four quadrants with a tower in the middle that rotates from player to player. Each quadrant is made up of several smaller spaces and buildings that you can move to. Within each quadrant, you can move up and down, left and right, whatever direction you want. But when you're moving from quadrant to quadrant, you must go counterclockwise, or else the tower gets confused as to where you are. Before we start on the tower itself, let's talk about your character sheet slash card. This is your character sheet. And as you can see, the character sheet is very simple. It's a punch card, essentially. And each character sheet tracks your Number of warriors, with the tens and the singles digit, how much gold you have, how much food, and any extras that you pick up along the way, as well as slots for your keys. As you travel around the board, the idea is that you collect three keys, gold, silver, and bronze, which will then help you unlock the tower and defeat the brigands within. Before you can defeat the brigands, you must answer the riddle of the tower, which we'll get into at the end. When you boot it up, it'll do a quick test run to make sure that all the lights are working, We'll cycle through all of the cellophane tubes that are inside, basically, which cover the light and make it act like it's a small screen. Okay. It'll ask you your difficulty and how many players you want to play. For this one, obviously, we're going to pick the first level of difficulty and just the one player. Me! start with picking our level. We definitely want to start at level 1. So we go yes. Awesome. When it's your turn, it'll flash your number and simply press what you want to do next on your turn. There's several different options, but for the most part, you're simply going to move. Cut the plague. Down to eight warriors. After each space and encounter, you'll have to adjust your character sheet accordingly depending on what has happened, either good or bad, gaining or losing warriors, gold, etc. Moving from space to face is easy, 
But entering some place like the bazaar can be a little bit more difficult. The bazaar will tell you how many troops are for sale and how much they are. If you get greedy or if you try and haggle too much, they'll actually kick you out and the bazaar will be closed and you'll have to try again on your next turn. The game continues moving from space to space. Plague. Plague again. Lost more warriors there. At this stage you might be a little confused, so let's take a turn and do inventory. When you use your inventory button, you're spending your entire turn confirming what's on your card with what the tower says. The tower will always know your proper inventory, so if you get a little lost or a little confused as to what you actually have, Take your turn and hit inventory. Let's keep going. Brigands! Eleven brigands. Nine warriors left. Eleven brigands. Uh-oh, I'm getting my ass kicked by brigands. Oh, there we go. The game will do combat automatically until one side is defeated. Oh, and a sword. 22 gold. Ha ha ha. If you win, you'll be given treasure or other items, such as the Pegasus, which allows you to move anywhere on the board within the quadrant or quickly from quadrant to quadrant. Or the Dragon Sword, which helps you defeat the Dragon, which is the most difficult creature in the game. It's only a one-use item, but it's very powerful. Moving from one quadrant to another takes your whole turn, pressing the Frontier button to let the tower know that you want to go from one quadrant to the next. It does take your whole turn, but on your next turn you can simply move as normal. Goodness. Easy victory, and our first of three keys. Let's zip ahead to the final battle and the riddle of the tower.
When you enter the Dark Tower, you'll be presented with the Riddle of the Tower. Basically, it's a guessing game, and it's going to present to you one of the three keys. You have to guess in which order you're going to use the three keys to unlock the tower, basically using yes or no if you think that that key is next in the line. Dark Tower. No. No. Yes. <gasps> We're in. Huh. That was lucky. One try. Then the final battle commences. 23 brigands. This doesn't look good at all. Oh man. Uh oh. Yeah. We're getting there. We can do it. Yes. Yes. And I was victorious. Victory! It's actually the first time I've ever beat this game. Well, there you have it. Dark Tower. A classic from the 80s. So fun. Even when I was just playing through this for this video, I had a lot of fun playing by myself. Now, if you could imagine several people moving at once, uh, it, it's just a really great game. And it's one of those games that's going to be harder and harder to find in working order. And that's really why I wanted to show you this video, because this is going to get more and more rare. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you understand what the game is about. And uh, these longer more produced videos is kind of what I want to do in the future. So there you have it, folks. That's it for this episode of Shane Loves Games. And remember, there's always a bigger fish. Maybe I'll have to try level two next.